Hi-Fi Rush is a game that I had absolutely zero hype and anticipation for. In fact, literally nobody did. This is what the game's marketing and advertisements looked like. There was none. This game was announced and then released as a shadow drop right away afterwards. In fact, it is available for free if you have Xbox Game Pass, and this one is a steal to have on there. Now, I bought this game on PC for 30 bucks because I don't play console, they suck. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Consoles are really impressive nowadays. Please leave me alone. I do actually wish I had Game Pass accessibility, but I have had no problem paying the price for this one and supporting this team for their efforts on this game. This may just be the happiest I have ever been to give a game company my money. Genuinely. Now, why in God's name is it ever a good idea to not advertise your product? Well, one of the biggest issues in modern gaming is the hype train, something that I myself have fallen victim to many times before. It seems that every big title gets revealed nowadays with an announcement trailer followed by a gameplay trailer one, two, three, etc., etc., and more often than not, people get let down. Even if the game is good, people will have something to complain about because it'll almost never be as good as the way you started to see it in your head after watching endless advertisements and gameplay trailers for it. Not to mention the inevitable delays as well. Red Dead gets delayed and you're disappointed. Cyberpunk gets delayed countless times and you're disappointed again. Well, when nobody knows your game even exists, I feel that so much more time dedication and money gets put into the actual product itself which at the end of the day i mean that's everything and thus hi-fi rush was born my first thought when i played this game is that it is a game for the people like legitimately for the people just like every game used to be the game is actually published by bethesda and developed by tango gameworks which are the same people that are responsible for the evil within games that was just shocking to me alone when I found that out. I never played the second Evil Within, but I remember loving the first one back in 2014. It was just so creepy and weird. It was one of the first big next-gen games, you know, when the Xbox One was the newest console. Obviously, at first glance, Hi-Fi Rush is just so wildly different than The Evil Within. And the fact that this studio is relevant right now again because of this successful release makes me happy. The most impressive thing about Hi-Fi Rush before you even play it is the art style. I'm an absolute sucker for a game that is aesthetically pleasing with lots of color. It immediately made me think of Borderlands, but I also got an Into the Spider-Verse vibe from it, which is one of my favorite films ever. I think my monkey brain subconsciously connected this game to that movie, and I knew I had to give it a try, and I have not been disappointed. The visuals smack you in the face right away. You are quite literally catapulted into the game. Whoa. Bring it on. This game rules. There's even some still shots with comic book like graphics, another technique used in Into the Spider Verse. The game does this sort of like freeze frame thing where it looks like you're staring at a comic book page and it really adds to the cutscenes. You can just tell how much care went into it. Now you play as a guy named Chai, and I don't watch anime, but he's exactly what I would imagine every anime protagonist is. A cute kid that has some brutally bad jokes. Profession, rock star. Future rock star. But he's very charming and likable and you're rooting for him and you're enjoying his growing character arc unfold through some fun cutscenes and character interactions. You're watching him learn more and more about his newfound abilities and turn into a badass guitar-wielding cyborg, which is awesome in itself. He teams up with various other interesting characters to aid him on his journey. It's nothing riveting, but it's not supposed to be. It's just all in good fun. There's your typical cast of bad guys that are in charge of this tech corporation. The company is striving for a breakthrough towards a new cybernetic limb replacement system, which sounds like it's good for its citizens, but you will quickly come to learn that this is all, of course, for more insidious reasons thus making them the bad guys of the game. I draw comparisons again to Borderlands because the dialogue is very over the top, especially with the villains, but it's well written. I saw your reflexes, but how about your endurance? Let's give it a go, go, go! And it is honestly quite funny, like, I almost don't care to admit how much I have laughed out loud at this game at its stupid ass jokes. It has a lot of dialogue that I feel like is supposed to make you cringe intentionally, 
but it's just so goofy and bad that it is good. There's even a talking cat that keeps licking her put. There's a refrigerator man that keeps hitting on you for some reason and Chai isn't really having it. Parrying is key for staying on the edge of- I wish I could parry your rejection. <laughs> Oh, now I feel bad. Chai is known by the corporation as the defect. The name's Chai, not defect. Because during his surgery process, things go wrong and an iPod straight out of the early 2000s is fused into his chest like he's Tony Stark. And that leads us to the best part of the game if you ask me, the combat. The combat mechanics revolve around one underlying premise. Rhythm is everything. Now the following is a very poorly lit example of rhythm from me myself. Let's take a look. <laughs> Here is an example of no rhythm. Fuck. The entire game revolves around music and timing. That is so satisfying. I've seen it being compared to the likes of a Devil May Cry type deal. I've never played any of those games or anything like this in general, so this is a totally new experience to me and they absolutely nailed it. It is incredibly satisfying to play. Attacking on the beat provides you with damage and score bonuses, so it's not really necessary, but the game wants you to learn how to play properly and you get rewarded for doing so. There's quite a learning curve, especially on hard, which I'm playing on. You can dodge to the beat, combo to the beat, parry to the beat, grapple to the beat. All right, you get the idea. It seems very basic on the surface, but through the first hour of the game, all these new mechanics keep getting thrown at you over and over, and you realize how much more intricate it is than just spamming buttons. There's full-scale combo list, and each one of these combos ends in some insanely stylish animations. There's special abilities that let you do things such as ride on your guitar like it's a skateboard and plow through robots, turning them into scrap and bits. How could you not want to do that? It is just so flashy. It is so fun to start pulling off successful combos and parries once things start to click for you. And obviously they did great work with the music because that's sort of the point of the game. There's fully original songs in this, as well as some licensed songs from Nine Inch Nails and other groups too. They even have an option to switch the music into streamer mode, which takes out these copyrighted songs if you're looking to record the game or stream the game maybe, which is like, what a good idea. More games need to do that. Ultimately, this has been one of the most pleasant surprises I've seen in the gaming industry in a while. By God. They have robot velociraptors. Again, free on Game Pass, $30 on Steam, better than so many $70 games out there. I feel like we are getting away with something with this one. I actually saw a fun article that Hi-Fi Rush outsold Forspoken in Steam sales like immediately, which is hilarious. And I hope that this really wakes up other developers to keep on putting out products like Hi-Fi. Go support this game, my friends. Me, on the other hand, I'm gonna go see if I can refund it and get it for free on Game Pass. <laughs> Thank you.